In this video, we will be using the rational zeros theorem to list possible rational zeros, and then we'll use our synthetic division with those possible zeros to find the actual rational zeros of our function, and then we'll factor the function using those zeros. So the rational zeros theorem says that if p over q is a rational number written in lowest terms, and if p over q is a zero of the function, then p is a factor of the constant term. So the constant term is this last term in our function. p is a factor of that term. And q is a factor of the lead coefficient. So q is going to be a factor of this first one. So in our example, we're going to investigate the function f of x equals 8x to the fourth minus 26x cubed minus 27x squared plus 11x plus 4. And we're asked to do a number of things. The first thing we want to do is list the possible rational zeros. So we'll be using our rational zeros theorem. So our possible rational zeros are going to come from a list of fractions for the p I want to get factors of my constant term. So factors of 4 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Now, uh, it helps to go in order on these and then also to uh, use the pairs to make sure that you aren't missing any. So 1 times 4 gives me the 4 and then 2 times 2 gives me 4. Then for my denominator, q is going to be factors of my lead coefficient. So I want to list my factors of 8 down here in the bottom. Factors of 8 will be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. Again, 1 times 8 is 8, and 2 times 4 is 8. So that should be all of them. Now, what I want to do next is list the fractions that I'm getting from this. We'll take 1 as our numerator. So my possible rational zeros. are plus or minus 1 over 1, and 1 over 1 is the same as 1, 1 over 2, one over 4, and 1 over 8. So now I'm done with the 1 for the numerator. Now let's do the 2 for the numerator. So plus or minus 2 over 1, which is just 2. Plus or minus 2 over 2. Now 2 over 2 is the same as 1, so I don't need to duplicate that one. Then 2 over 4, that reduces to 1 half, and I've already listed 1 half as a possible 0, so I don't need to duplicate there. And then 2 over 8 is 1 fourth, so I don't need to duplicate that either. Let's go on to do the 4 for my numerator, plus or minus 4 over 1, which is 4. Plus or minus 4 over 2 is the same as 2, and I've already got that listed, so I don't want to duplicate it. 
plus or minus 4 over 4. Already have that listed. That's 1. And then 4 over 8 is 1 half, and I already had that listed. So this is our list of possible rational zeros. Now, for part B, we want to find our rational zeros. Uh, remember that since this is a fourth degree polynomial, I'm only going to have four zeros at most. So uh, let's, and what we'll have to do is synthetic division with these numbers as our k value. And if we get a remainder of zero, then we have a, a, a zero. So I just need to start doing this. Let me use 1. I'm going to list my coefficients. Let's see, 4, 3, 2, 1. So nothing's missing. I have 8, negative 26, negative 27, 11, and 4. Bring this down, 8 times 1 is 8, negative 18, negative 18, negative 45, negative 45, negative 34, negative 34, and negative 30 is my remainder, so this one is not one is not a zero. Let's do the negative one. The same numbers in negative twenty six, negative twenty seven, eleven, and four. So I have eight, negative eight negative 34, 34, 7, negative 7, 4, negative 4, and yay, I've got a 0. So negative 1 is one of my zeros. Um, I'm going to wait and, and not do these fractions. I'm going to just do the whole numbers first. And then if I have to do the fractions, I can. But, um, it's easier to do uh, synthetic division with the whole numbers, if possible. And plus, we uh, only need to use this uh, new function, this 8x to the third power, minus 30. 4x squared plus 7x plus 4. So my next one I'm going to try is positive 2. Let's try that with these numbers. Bring down my first one. 16. That's a negative 18, that's a negative 36, and that's negative 29, and then that is negative 58. So my remainder here is a negative 54. So 2 is not one of my zeros. Let's try negative 2. 8. Negative 34, 7, and 4. Bring down my first one. So this is negative 16, negative 50. That's 100. That's not going to work. Negative 214, and then negative 210. So this one is not a zero. Um, let's try a positive four. Eight, 
8, negative 34, 7, and 4. Thirty-two, negative two, negative eight, negative one, negative four. Okay, we got another zero. So four is a zero. And uh, we've reduced our function now down to eight squared minus two x minus one. I can factor this. It looks like I have 4x and x, 1 and 1. And I have, oh, no, this needs to be 4 times 2, sorry. And then 8x. Okay. I need my 4x to be negative. 2x will be positive. So to get my zeros from these two factors, I can set them equal to 0 and solve for x. So 4x equals negative 1 by 4, and x equals negative 1 4. So this is another 0. And then the same thing for this, 2x minus 1 equals 0, 2x equals 1, divide by 2, so x equals 1 half. So my uh, zeros are negative 1, 4, negative 1 fourth, and 1 half. So that's the answer to my part B here. And then let's see, part C said to factor f of x. Well, we know if we have a 0, then that's our k value. So x minus k is a factor. So uh, for part c, I have f of x equals x minus negative 1, because k is negative 1, um, x minus Four, and I could put x minus negative one fourth, but I already know that these factors are four x plus one and two x minus one. So let's uh, simplify this. Minus minus is plus, so x plus 1, x minus 4, 4x plus 1, and 2x minus 1. My factored form.